Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Connected Body Podcast. I am so excited you're here today for today's guest, Jennifer Joy Jimenez. Jennifer is the co-founder of the Brave Thinking Institute, expert faculty and trainer, founder and director of the Health and Wellbeing Division. Jennifer, through her transformational retreats, workshops, and cutting-edge Vibrant Healthy Woman program, she has coached thousands worldwide to become more confident, healthy, joyful, abundant, and full of life so that they feel fully empowered to make the difference they are here to make in the world. I love that. Jennifer has been featured in publications like Self, Shape, Oxygen, and Woman's World and on TV, Fox Business, NBC News, and more. In addition, she shared the stage with thought leaders such as Marianne Williamson, Maya Angelou, Byron Katie, Bob Proctor, Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, and more. She's also the creator of the highly acclaimed transformative movement modality, Transcendance, helping people of all ages and backgrounds worldwide move stuck energy, dance their dreams into reality, and truly thrive with joy and vitality in their body temple. With more than two decades of expertise in authentic heart-centered sales, Jennifer is also the co-founder of Conversations That Close, the seven-step system for successful enrollment conversations. She loves supporting purpose-driven difference makers to sell with greater ease and achieve extraordinary results. Over 1 million in sales can attribute can be attributed to this powerful proven heart-centered sales system. I know you're going to love this interview and let's get started. Here we go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Connected Body Podcast. I am so excited to have my friend, this amazing, beautiful woman today to interview, Jennifer Joy Jimenez. Welcome, Jennifer, to the show. Oh, my goodness. I'm so grateful to be here, Laura. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So, Jennifer, as you all learned in her intro, is a powerhouse. Like she is just, has done amazing things. And I met Jennifer, gosh, it's got to be almost 10 years now, at least. Um, when we were, I was in the fitness industry and Jennifer was approaching one of her birthdays and we kind of you connected. Can say it, you can say it, the big 4-0. The big 4-0 <laughs> and she wanted to get in shape. And that's kind of how we met and we connected virtually online, just like we're doing now. Jennifer, you started with dance and I know that's a huge part of who you are. So why don't you give us a little intro of your dance background? Yes, I would love to. So I am from a small town just outside of Portland, Oregon, on a farm, Hillsboro, Oregon. I grew up on a 100 and plus acre Marionberry farm. And there was not a whole lot to do back in, I was born in 75, so that tells you my my age. But um, yeah, so there wasn't a whole lot to do. So my favorite thing was to to dance and to just be free and to run around. And then we would drive past this dance studio um, in Beaverton on, my, on the way to my mom's work. And I begged and begged and begged my parents to put me into anything I could get my hands on that was movement related. And that was the one thing that I could see where people were in a studio and dancing. So I started in uh, the world of dance in pretty traditional classes, ballet, and jazz um, were really available. Tap dance was available at that studio. And I just really fell in love with dance in general. I did some cheerleading in high school. I did musical theater. And then I, I moved to, um, I fell in love actually with my husband while I was in high school. So I moved to Mexico City, which is where he's from. And I went to right. their fine arts. They have two really fantastic fine arts school, Bellas Artes y La Unam, for anybody out there who might have uh, a connection to Mexico City. Mm. And um, I quickly learned that I was actually a little old um, in their world for um, 
you know, studying. So I moved to New York and I studied in New York. I moved to LA, studied dance in LA and got into a modern dance company in my early twenties. And so my relationship with dance and my relationship with my body began to form really through the lens of the professional dance world mm -hmm. back in, you know, the, the late nineties really. Right. Um, and so back then <clears throat> It was very much this no pain, no gain mentality. You right. have to strive to be as absolute stick thin as humanly possible. And my frame is not naturally designed that way. So it mm -hmm. felt like a constant battle and constant fight. Right. There was a lot of body loathing that was just absolutely normal and, and um, you know, constantly criticizing yourself, constantly right. looking in the mirror and looking at what is needing to be fixed. And even in college, I think the thing that um, still floors me is they graded us in ballet on our weight. Like we wow. got a, we got a letter grade. <laughs> I, mean, I can I laugh about it that. now. It wasn't very funny at the time because I was definitely at that time under weight Right. And I still got a C in the in the category of weight, which just wow. to this day baffles me. I know um, that they would even do that. I, I hope and pray they don't do that anymore. I, I don't think imagine. they do. There's yeah. been a lot that's changed in yeah. in the many years since I've been in <laughs> yeah. college. But um I share all of that just to put into perspective, you know, if there's anyone out there that is struggling with body loathing, body dysmorphia, struggling mm -hmm. with a relationship with food, struggling with when you put yourself on the scale in the morning, what yeah. you weigh determines your happiness for the day. Right. Literally millions and millions of women are yeah. struggling with this today. Yes. And I just want everyone to know that it's a learned behavior and you can yeah. learn to shift it. It can yeah. be transformed and changed. And Laura, I know you being in the yeah. fitness industry, I mean, like extreme, not just like the general fitness yeah. industry, but like bodybuilding and competition. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar to the professional dance world in, in that regard. Yeah. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah. When I, when, you know, I entered this whole thing just to get myself in shape. That was all I wanted to do. And then it transpired into the um, figure competitions. But I think even though it looks like it's such an amazing, healthy world, there's really this back, you know, curtain of it is like, you know, you're, you're working hard, you're having this amazing shape and then your competition is over. And then you just want to eat everything that you've deprived yourself of mm. for months. And the body, the body is way smarter, you know, it's, it's, it's going to catch up to you. And it's mm. a very unhealthy way to live. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. once you're at this, you know, amazing shape and weight and you go back to what's normal, you feel abnormal. Like you think now you, your whole perspective has changed. You should always look like this. And you put maybe five, 10 pounds on and you just feel like, oh, yeah, it's, it's really plays with the mind. And it's a shame because we are not a number on a scale. <laughs> and it shouldn't dictate our day and it shouldn't. We are, we're beautiful human beings with so much to give to the world, whether we're, you know, skinny like this or a full figure. It's, it does not matter. You're you, you're always you here, you know? Yeah. What do you think about it, that? <laughs> it's so true. Well, I think for me, I really, part of what helped me wake up to how disconnected and um, really dysfunctional and abusive I had become with my body was when I became pregnant with my daughter. Mm -hmm. So in my mid-20s, actually pretty early for a professional dancer, um, I was married at the time and we were being careful, but obviously you know what can happen when you're right. being careful. So I got right. pregnant a little earlier than planned, but yeah. still wouldn't ever, ever change it. I mean, my daughter's 22 amazing. now and just amazing. Yeah. And she really helped catapult me into this new actual connection. Mm. I had been, I had completely disconnected from mm. my body. I'd been taught to ignore the signals of my body. I had mm. taught to not trust 
my body wisdom. I had been taught to push through the pain, yeah. to keep going when my body was screaming for rest, to not eat and to starve right. my body, all these things in the dance world. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden now I'm pregnant and it becomes not about me. It becomes right. about nurturing this beautiful baby in my, in my womb and right. I need to feed her and I should right. probably rest because I'm feeling tired, right. you know, and I, I don't want anything. I don't want to push too hard because right. something might go wrong with the pregnancy. Right. And it was like a light bulb switch had been turned off all of yeah. a sudden got turned on and I yes. could actually hear and feel and sense this incredible body wisdom that mm -hmm. lived within me. Now, I want to say, even if you don't ever plan on being a mom or having children, or you feel like, oh no, I missed my opportunity to turn the light switch on because my right. I've already had my kids. <laughs> it doesn't matter. My my right. point, and I've I've walked thousands of beautiful women through this experience of that body wisdom, that the that inner connection to this incredible yeah. body is always yeah. here. And yes. it actually takes very little to begin to turn on the re reconnect. It's almost like a right. phone line, you know right. what I mean? And you just pick up the phone that the, the wisdom's there. It's been there all right. along. It's just been the volumes either. It's almost like if you, yeah. you're on a, a call and you go, Oh, I just need to turn the volume up. Oh yeah. Like the volume's been here all along. It can, it can be, it really can be that easy. Yeah. And that, that was my entry you know, into turning on that body wisdom and her birth. It was, it was actually a bit of a traumatic birth, but it was because I was so in fear around my body and I was still in control mode, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, a lot of traditional fitness and traditional dance. It's all about whip the body into shape right. and control this dead mass of tissue right. and the body couldn't be anything more opposite than a dead mass of tissue to be right. carved and toned. Right. It is a right. living, breathing, wise. One of my favorite quotes that I love is um, um, uh, the godmother of, um, of modern dance. And she says, her name will come to me, <clears throat> um, Ruth St. Dennis, the, the godmother of conscious dance and modern dance said that the body is a receiving and transmitting station yes. for life itself. And so we want to render the body responsive. We want to listen to the body. And so the, the traumatic birth actually helped me realize that I was still in many ways living from constriction and fear right. and how you do anything is how you do everything. And so- right. For the next really four years until my second baby was born, I went on a deep healing journey and I found my conscious dance mentors. Love I it. found conscious dance for the first mm -hmm. time and really began to dive into that healing spiritual practice and mm -hmm. energy medicine and mind, body, spirit connection. And I yeah. read every book I could get my hands on and took as many classes as I could find and also began to teach. I began yes. to have women say, okay, there's something happening with you. Like, I want some of that medicine. Like, right. I want some right. of what you've got. Like, can you begin to share it? And I began to really codify and create um, what is now Transcend Dance, yeah. the conscious dance modality that I teach yeah. to beautiful women all over the world. And and I ultimately became, as you've shared, you know, in my bio, a transformational life coach and began to launch yes. programs and things. But the journey is always first with our own selves, you know, yes. the healing that needs to happen here, the reconnection that needs to happen here. And so yes. my new, I call them my body loving, you know, beliefs versus my body loathing mm -hmm. beliefs is that food is just energy. Yes. And my body tells me how much to eat, when to eat, when to stop eating, just like a baby. You can't force a baby to eat. Yes. Right? Yes. If the baby's full, it's like, bleh, it just, That's you know. what I tell my my daughter. She has an almost two-year-old and she'll, she'll be like, oh my gosh, he hasn't eaten in a day, two days. I'm like, it's okay. When he's hungry, he will eat. They intuitively know. It's built yes. in. And like yes. you said, we're just dis so disconnected from it. And when we finally start to tap back in, we know, yes. we know, and it really helps, but it's that sitting and getting quiet and actually listening instead mm -hmm. of the go, go, go. 
It's so true, Laura. That really is the piece is carving out time in yeah. sacred mindful yes. practices. So it could be a mindful yoga class. You want to pay attention to the teacher because nowadays there's literally tens of thousands of yoga instructors yes. and you can, you'll sense and feel and know, you know, try, yeah. ask for guidance from, you know, your higher self from mm -hmm. spirit around where to find opportunities and resources. Nowadays, I mean, there's so much even on your apps, there's yoga apps yes. and mindful meditation apps and yes. things of that nature. There's conscious dances now available. I broadcast my conscious dance classes online. There's classes, you know, all over the world that are, you know, broadcasting and, and, um, you know, through zoom, but there's also local, yeah. you know, opportunities to, to do meditation, mindful movement, yoga, yes. conscious dance, these types of things. So much. Now I am so thrilled as to, you know, what you're offering now. And I'm, I'd love for, um, you, if you wouldn't mind sharing, you know, just with your audience, like what caused the shift? Something happened where you just felt this like magnetism, and let me just say, let me just toot your horn for a minute, because like, you're the woman who has like every certification under the sun. Like you, <laughs> you're a lifelong learner. It's one of the things that I immediately yes. fell in love about you and why of all the, of all the beautiful trainers in the whole wide world, I chose you to help get me into the next level shape for my big birthday. You know, like I, I searched and I was like, her, her, <laughs> she is a badass. She is amazing. Like I can just, I could just see the light emanating from you, um, you know, even back then and you're, you've expanded, you know, things yeah. into a new place. So tell us about that. Yeah. Well, you know, I just talked about this this morning in, in like, I think my Facebook group that I had been disconnected from myself and my true path. You know, I, I've been doing the fitness for like 10 years, but I wasn't feeling it here in my heart and my soul. And I knew something was missing, but I didn't quite know what. But like you mm -hmm. said, I've always been learning. I've always want to learn this and this and take this class, like sign me up. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, meditation was always very hard for me to, I'd go to yoga class. I'm like, oh, now I've got to go exercise in the gym. Like, like it was like, that's a waste of my time. But, um, somehow meditation came into my life. I've started practicing with, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza and it was just this huge shift. And I brought it into my life. My husband wakes up every day at 5 AM and meditates. He's been doing this for the, over a year now. Like this wow. is someone who you thought would never ever meditate. So it's really changed our lives and it's, it's opened my world even more because it was always open, but like to sound healing and the crystal singing bowls and vibration and energy in the body and how we truly have the power to create our own health, our own world and our own life within us instead of looking out there. So yeah, so I've incorporated all that into what I'm doing now, as well as fitness. I've always been kind of Yay. intuitive. I said the intuitive personal trainer, trainer, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I'm bouncing this back to you, girl. Transcendence. Tell us about transcendence because you yeah. just light up whenever you talk about it, <laughs> as you should. Well, it is, um, yeah. So, as I was, as I mentioned, you know, looking for the answer to this, like, okay, I just had this traumatic birth, even though I, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life, I'm young, I'm fit. I did my visualizations. I wrote out my natural birth plan. Like I did the whole thing that you, they say to do and it didn't right. work. So clearly I missed the mark somewhere. So what's going on? And um, I was immediately attracted to several mentors who helped me discover what conscious dance was. And it couldn't be more different than traditional dance. So in traditional mm -hmm. dance, you walk into a super light and bright dance studio there's mirrors. Usually you're facing one direction. Right. Now back, you know, many, 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 many moons ago, and I'm, I'm hoping it's very different now, but I, you know, I know there's still some of this going on. It's, it's a competitive energy. Sure. You know, you want to be front and center. There's a lot of competition. Who's, who's the best. So right. it's a, there's a vibration of competition and kind of sizing you up. And so therefore you're 
even competing, you know, right. and sizing yourself up and judgment from the teacher, quite a bit of right. like, you got to do this better and that better and do it right. And you're copying, you know, a, a choreography. Now there, it can be super artistic and fun and expressive. There's absolutely a place in this world for the arts. Sure. So there's by no means am I discounting the power that that has provided in my life and where it took me. Right. But conscious dance, let me explain the difference. So you walk into a room, there's no mirrors and therefore it. you're dancing in a 360 degree method. So there's no front to the room. Right. Um, the music is usually much more new age, although you can find modern music and a lot of conscious dance or ecstatic dance classes. But the vibe, the the emotional resonance in the room is of collaboration and connection mm. and seeking unconditional love. You're seeking this spiritual ecstatic right. experience. Um, the, the, the conscious dance world, ecstatic you know, dance, which has a, a location all over the country, their, their rules for their class are this is a substance free place because mm -hmm. you get such a high from yeah. just the endorphins that are released, the positive emotions yeah. that are released. Um, all the feel good, good chemicals get released yeah. when you're, when you're dancing in this way. And so I, I really went on my own personal development journey as well as my healing journey, as well as my conscious dance journey. And Transcendence just began to form itself. Almost like if anybody saw the movie, The Matrix, where you see mm -hmm. the grid, it was it was like that as, as women, particularly women would come to me and say, okay, I feel very stiff, disconnected, mm -hmm. awkward, um, constricted, disconnected from my divine feminine. Like I don't yeah. feel womanly, feminine, sensual. I feel like I'm very much in go energy or push energy yeah. or like stifled energy. And you're so fluid and so feminine and, and beautiful yet strong. Yeah. And you right. speak your truth and you're empowered. Like, how do I do that? I want and that. I would immediately, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> Can I have more of that. And I would say, sure, I would love to share yeah. whatever I can. And, and honestly, it's about unlocking her. I call her your wise woman, mm -hmm. your embodied woman, your unlocked, unleashed, you know, uninhibited. Yeah. Um, you yeah. doesn't live by copying somebody else. It doesn't live in a diet. It actually doesn't even live in a book. Right. Now there are books and programs and things that can help spark her to come right. alive and awaken you, but she really lives just by being with her. And what I love about conscious dance is you put on some music and I'll tell you, we were born to do this. If you watch yeah. your, and I know you do, your two-year-old or a three-year-old or a four-year-old and you put music on, I've never met a toddler that says, I have two left feet. Yeah. I don't like yeah. to dance. They, they just move and they smile. It's so cute. Right? I mean, so cute. Just, just go to TikTok and like look up baby <laughs> dance. <laughs> It's the cutest thing. They're dancing to Beyonce, shaking their booty and kicking yeah. their legs. And like, yeah. I mean, it's so It's freeing. Cute. It's freeing. It's, it's freeing, freeing up. Like you said, the blocked energy in the body. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. vibrate higher and higher. <laughs> so with Transcendence, it's 10 stages. What I have facil I do a Transcendence facilitator training now right. for those that want to learn not only how to deepen their own practice, their own embodiment, their own confidence, their own freedom, but then want to take it, you know, out into the world and help yeah. others experience it. And I'll often get asked, Jennifer, what's the difference between like Transcendence and these other conscious dance modalities, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I like to say, the main difference I feel is that if you go into an ecstatic dance class or experience there, a lot of them are outdoors, like mm -hmm. here in California, they're on the beach. I mean, it's so cool. Right. Have like, right. you know, like the, the headphones that you can do and the whole thing, or, yeah. um, you go into a five rhythms or, um, some of these other modalities, which I, totally recommend and mm -hmm. love. Yeah. It can be for the, the common person off the street, a little bit like, holy 
crap. I don't know if I can right. say bad words on <laughs> your podcast, but <laughs> I would have said another word, but I, I toned it down. But I mean, like, it's really intimidating, mm-hmm. especially if you feel disconnected from your body and not quite yeah. sure exactly where to start or what to do. And right. what I have learned over decades of leading women in women's retreats, leading classes in every arena you can find from fitness centers to yoga studios to cor- I've taken transcendence to correctional facilities to awesome. cancer groups and patients hospitals children I mean I've I've really gone out there and and I understand like the psychology of people and what they need to hear right. to just begin to go within to begin to turn off the outer eyes and turn on the inner eyes yeah. to let that inner dancer just to come. It's like, it's okay. You won't get, you won't, you know, it's like letting that inner child that wanted to play in grade school and was told, sit down, shut up, be quiet, stop dreaming. Right. Right. Don't make noise, like bottle it up. And then for decades, we go through traditional school and we've bottled it up and it isn't safe to let that out. And so to all of a sudden be told, oh yeah, you know, just be crazy, be silly, make noise, move your body. It's just too much in some, for some all at once. Now for some, they're like ready, let's go. (laughs) Right. But for others, they need a little bit of like, we're going to start here and then we're going to go here. So it's 10 stages that it's like, um, it's like letting the the rose gently blossom versus okay. expecting it to be open like this right. already. I love that, that analogy. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, no, we're because I gently enter into this little one little step at a time. So there's a whole warm up experience and we take you into the breath right. and some stretching on the floor and then I have everyone stand and then we do we dance the body parts. It can be a lot easier to just dance the hand as the body's moving mm-hmm. than focus on just dance, just go. People I love are that. Well, like, um, I don't know where to begin. Like they think they have to do yes. a step. You right. know, they kind of fall into these like, but wait, I was ridiculed on, you know, in middle right. school. I was told, like, you know, like all these memories rush in. So I have, it's almost like movement hacks where their brain is thinking about this and their head is moving like that, that they can't even think, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And one of the agreements is that this is a non-judgment zone right. and we agree not to judge others, not to judge ourselves. Right. We agree to let our body be our guide. We agree to let that inner child and have a childlike curiosity yeah. and to just release all the inhibitions and move like no one's watching. Yeah. And, and just let the body, and you'd be surprised after a few sessions, one of my favorite, um, I have, I have many favorite transcendent stories, healings and all sorts of things that have happened in class. But recently one of my male facilitators, um, who is your typical white guy, you know, probably right. six two, tall, thin, you know, kind of geeky looking, right. would probably be ridiculed in that middle school right. dance and told, just right. to stop, just stop. Right. I mean, like mean, mean, mean stuff, right? right. And the beauty, of, the beauty of transcendence is you can transcend dance in a wheelchair, mm. in the hospital bed, you know, um, fully mobile, super fit people. It doesn't matter right. your fitness level, your body's right. going to move you the way it feels comfortable and right. what feels safe. And so after probably three sessions At the end of class, I stay over and you can do some sharing. He said, I don't know what just happened. I'm kind of freaked out right now, but my body, there was a moment in class when it shifted. All of a sudden, my body was dancing me. And I was like, that's it. (laughs) Oh, that's beautiful. (laughs) Just touch the hem of the garment of what this is all about because the body, if if you have ever watched like a cat, Right. Or my dog, like my dog does it literally a down dog every right. morning when she wakes yeah, up. Yeah, like, they do. It's not a joke, right? She literally does. And the animals know how to keep themselves. Yes. They don't have chiropractors. No. They don't have all these things, <laughs> like, right? They're, right. They naturally they know. move their body intuitively. Yeah. I mean, maybe there are animal chiropractors. Yeah. I apologize if they if those actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> It's possible <laughs> nowadays, right? It's possible. Yes. But my point being, animals are very much still in tune and in touch with yes. their natural body. And 
I find after a transcend dance class, I'm not exaggerating. I feel like I've had a chiropractic adjustment. We do energy healing. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I've had some sort of a Reiki session or energy mm -hmm. healing session. I feel like I have had a full workout because I'm mm -hmm. usually drenched because I right. dance pretty big. So I'm like right. just completely drenched. And I've, the whole beginning, there's all this stretching, right? So I feel right. like I've wrung out all the negative stuff mentally, emotionally, and spiritually that just gets stuck and yep. stored. And um, particularly for the change agents, the people that are, that this is like, they do healing work. They're working with right. clients, coaches, therapists, frontline workers, teachers, you know, where there's just right. a lot of stuff coming at you. Right. Even, you know, in my experience, we're, we're still human, right? So right. we just take on unconsciously all yeah. kinds of energy oh, that yeah. we don't mean to. Yep. And then all of a sudden, if we don't have an outlet for it, yeah. it gets embodied and embedded and then it can become disease. It can yes. become injury. It can become all these things. So to have a regular... It's not just a fitness routine by right. any means. It's a right. spiritual, it's a mental, it's an emotional, it's a it's a cleansing process where you walk out going, okay, I've just gone through a whole mental, emotional, physical like reboot in right. every sense. I feel amazing. And you can also do it in short snippets. Like it doesn't right. yes, the full class is like full on medicine and I need it and I do it. Right. Movement but sometimes medicine. Sometimes yeah. I'm working on like a list of projects like you know, like a mile long. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be a transcend dance in 10, meaning like <laughs> two songs, you know, and it just, even one song, you can do one song. And I love that. I love that. Yeah. Because there's no one minute is longer than no minutes. You know what I mean? Like if you just do something to release that, it's so beautiful. And I, I actually had the opportunity to do one of your virtual transcendence classes and I loved it. And I'm one who, who is dancing. Dancing was never my, my thing growing up. I never danced even in high school, like never, never. So for me, it, it, it was an uncomfortable thing. Um, but in the class, it was just beautiful because like you said, you just started out slow. It wasn't like, okay, we're dancing. I would have been like, uh, I'm, I would be the one who would stand in the corner, you know, and watch, <laughs> but no, I didn't feel that way at all. And it was beautiful. It just flowed and, and everyone was so loving and supportive. That was really a beautiful part of it. Plus mm -hmm. you were there. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And to that point, I, I find that, you know, that inner dancer just gets kind of put in the back drawer, right? When you say I was the yes. one that didn't dance, like, yep. you know, if we were to go back and you and I would be three and we would be in like a outdoor summer concert, we would be dancing. Yeah, Like, you know what I mean? Like there is, yeah. there is no question in my mind yeah. that you right? We're this free little girl that, yes. you know, and I know that there's family history and, you know, all sorts of reasons why being super active and fit mm -hmm. and all of that, you know, wasn't as, as encouraged, you know what I mean? Right. Growing up. And yeah. so a lot of it is just embedded yes. experiences and beliefs that get internalized. And then we just yes. turn, turn those parts of ourselves down or even off, off. until all of a sudden one day we meet you know, a Laura London or a Jennifer Jimenez. And we go, oh, we can have permission at any age. And I think that's yeah. why I'm so passionate about, and I get just like this, just waves of emotion that rise up when I'm, when I say this, that we need outlets, particularly yeah. women need yes. safe. I can't yes. tell you how many women come to me and say, I've always known I had an inner dancer mm -hmm. hidden in there. I always wanted to dance or I did dance. And then I put that, like right. I thought that chapter was over. Like right. I put her, I hung up my ballet shoes or my jazz shoes or my Latin dance shoes or whatever they did back in the right. day. And I have now been, and, and fitness and movement has become right. like this drudgery or this very linear, yeah. like walk on the treadmill while yeah. you're watching Netflix. Like right. it's like this cool. very two-dimensional and it's boring. 
<laughs> right? Boring. And listen, I'm not saying I I don't do that or have never done that. Like I'm there again, there's room for it all. My point is just there's this right. other technicolor, magical, right. beautiful way of feeling in and being in the body that's right. available that really is a spiritual journey for those that are really yes. looking for, okay, there's got to be more to life than yeah. just raising yeah. my own kids and then raising my grandkids and then going yes. to work and then coming home. Like, I know I'm meant for more. Yeah. I know I'm meant for more. Yeah. And these kinds of modalities in my life have helped me connect to that purpose, passion, mission, why I'm here, help me yes. release the limiting paradigms, the limiting beliefs, the limiting patterns and habits that are just of lower vibration and not yeah. in alignment with my soul self yep. and help me connect to her, my soul self, my mm -hmm. empowered on purpose, on fire, mm -hmm. higher self so that I can help others yes. do the same. I love that. That's yeah. beautiful, Jennifer. That's beautiful. Okay. So tell everyone where we can find you. On yes. The yes, internet. yes, yes. So um, I have partnered with my mother and my brothers, and we have together a personal development company called the Brave Thinking Institute, like Brave, like the movie Braveheart. So Brave yes. Thinking Institute, where we empower people to create and live a life they love. You can go to Brave Thinking institute.com. And there's um, the health and well-being division. I'm the founder and creator of our health mm -hmm. and well-being division. Specifically, if you're looking for how to quickly find the transcendence page, you can go to bti.com forward slash dance. Okay. bti.com forward slash dance. And um, I do teach the first Saturday of every month and the second Wednesday evening of every month. And I think I had promised your community that I would give a free coupon code. Yay! And I do have it. Just give me one second. Yep. Let yeah. me pull you guys it are gonna up. love it. Yes. Here we like, go. Like, can't you just feel Jennifer's energy just bouncing off the screen? <laughs> I can't <laughs> I can't wait. So it's body twenty-two. Okay. So B O D Y twenty-two, all lowercase, all one, all all together. Body 22, you can put that in. Classes normally, you know, super affordable anyways, $20. Yeah. But bti.com forward slash okay. dance. Okay. You can type in body 22 and um, get the class for free. The next um, class that is probably going to be happening once you uh, post this, yes. um, you know, broadcast would be the first Saturday you know, coming up 10 a.m. Pacific on Zoom. When you register, we send you the Zoom link. Okay. You don't have to turn your camera on if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. You can just come as you are mm -hmm. and open mind, open heart, willing spirit, and you're going to be so glad your body will absolutely thank you. I love it. All right. I'm going to put all those links and the coupon code below this uh, podcast interview too. So don't worry. We've got it all for you, everybody. So Jennifer, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your your story. And, and you're really an inspiration to many, many thousands of women across the globe and, and myself included. And I just want to say thank you. Hmm, it is my pleasure Thank you, Laura, for being you, for shining your light, for continuing to follow your purpose, passion, and mission. It is, it is making such a huge difference, and I'm so honored to be your friend and your colleague and to share in this amazing endeavor with you. So thank you. Thank you, and we'll see everybody on the next Transcendence class. <laughs> see you there. <laughs> Yay! All Yay. right. Bye, everyone.